Welcome to NHK World Direct Talk interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Yim Myosu is an innovative entrepreneur in Myanmar who runs a successful hospitality business. She started everything from scratch. Yim Myosu achieved this in a dysfunctional state led by an oppressive regime and under economic sanctions. The country is now on its path to democracy. She is not only promoting ethical standards in business, but also thinking about the conservation of nature and culture for future generations. To me, um, success is when you can have a lot of impact where you are in your profit, but also people and the, the, the surrounding nature and also yourself, if you are still passionate about waking up the next morning and saying, oh, what next today? <laughs> I think that's the success story that I would, I would think that that is the real true success story. <laughs> Imyosu's home is on the shores of Inlay Lake at the foot of Shan Hills in eastern Myanmar. She comes from the famed Indar tribe, known for their distinct rowing technique and their floating gardens. She has built a lakeside resort small in size, but renowned for its beauty and tranquility. It has found success by combining a high standard of service with a personal touch and highlighting indigenous nature, tradition, and culture. Im Myosu believes Myanmar's ethnic diversity should be a source of strength, not conflict. We 135 tribes not only speak, we dress differently. We have our own calendar and New Year's and festivities and custom. It is such a complicated um, uh, you know, situation. On the other hand, this rich uh, cultural diversities and heritage is such a brand, such a character, such a unique way that I only see as a positive. Actually, in a true art of um, receiving and a true art of experiencing a travel experience, at the end of the day is exchange with the local people. That's how I understand about luxurious in terms of traveling. Unfortunately, economically, we are, not, we are underdeveloped. Politically, we are unstable. But can you imagine if we have stable politics and policies, if we have economy growth, and if we have right education, we will be as strong, if not more, than so-called developed country. In Myosu's interest in the hospitality business goes back 40 years when her father decided to welcome foreign guests into their house. My father started a small guest house since 1976. He started to see those tourists coming into Inlay and uh, sometimes they have no accommodation. So our family house sometimes turned into a uh, backpacker's you know, home. I was uh, four years old then, and my mom used to cook, and my father welcomed the guest, and I used to entertain at night because nothing happened after sunset. That's how he threw me into this business without knowing this will become my life career. In Myosu grew up in a country impoverished by military rule. She joined fellow students in 1988 to protest failed economic policies and a call for democracy. Her father supported her and in 1990 was himself elected a member of parliament for the National League for Democracy, the party led by Aung San Suu Kyi. In a subsequent crackdown, he was arrested and imprisoned for more than a year. The torture to my father, or you know, being away from the family is one thing in the prison. But the feeling of insecurity, the hardship, the sadness, the cries, the misery that my mother carry outside prison is another kind of torture and suffering. My mom said, just get out and do something worthy with your life. And if you are studying, if you are aware somewhere, you can look after yourself. That is less stress for me. 
Lin Myosu left the country to study overseas with help from people who once stayed at her home. She worked her way through a vocational training school in France, where she learned that understanding history and culture is essential to hospitality. It was not easy, of course. Once you arrive there, you have to adapt the country. I don't understand why the sun stay not set at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the evening. The way they eat, the way they dress, the way they smell, everything is so different. However, I had learned to appreciate their culture, their custom, but also it also highlighted how much values we have in our own country, in our own culture. I learn about passion. I learn about people who walk not only to make a living, but to commit in something that they believe in, they value in, they deliver the best of the best. Im Myosu returned home after five years and put her learning to practice with a 12-room hotel. She had to build everything from the ground up, relying on local people and available resources. By 1995, 1996, the country was cut off from the rest of the world. We don't have a lot of import or export, but because of the challenges in those days, it allowed us to be more creative and be, um, how do you say that, to, to create with whatever you have around you. We have to collect stones from the rivers around and stream around, and some of the rooms have a stone wall, not because of we know uh, we, or decoration and understand how to make a you know, fantasy wall, but because of simply you can't buy any ties which is similar to one another. So those are challenges. However, that create unique, authentic um, walls, and now I have a story to tell as well. So it's adding more values at the end. That authenticity drew guests from around the world despite the remote location and political situation. But other obstacles were harder to overcome. One of her efforts to implement ethical business practices was quickly crushed. The tax officer looked at me above his glasses saying that you want to pay tax? Say yes. Every citizen should be doing this. And then I was trying to lecture him. And uh, so he said, uh, Dumale, my, my niece, let me tell you something. This year, if I collect 10,000, next year it should be 11, 12, and there is no way that you can make excuse that you cannot collect enough tax because the country policy is so right that we are only progressing. Secondly, he said, you will be the only one who will be honest and pay 100% tax. No one here want to pay because they can't afford to pay. So what happened is that you will be enemy with everyone who doesn't pay. So they taught me to, they taught me to cheat. The system taught us to cheat. And that is a reality which is very, very hard to solo. Im Myosu managed to keep the resort running for the past two decades with the support of her staff who she considers her extended family. She says she is at last paying taxes according to the law now that Aung San Suu Kyi is leading democratic reforms. I am so happy that finally we stopped cheating. To me, from business sector, we got to set good example. Money is not everything, but it still is a tool to make sure that everybody can feel their tummy. Without feeling their tummy, you cannot talk about tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. That's too luxurious. So to me is that the basic foundation is the needs, everyday needs, food, accommodation, security, healthcare, all this has to be very strongly supported. And that we as a business sector or private sector can contribute a lot. In 2009, Im Yosud started a nonprofit foundation to help preserve the heritage of her people, where she now has a vocational training school for hospitality. She teaches 40 plus students a year to study for free. She wants to pass on everything she has learned from her family and her experience to future generations. I think I'm just doing part of my job as a a human being living in this world. I was born and raised in this area, so I want to preserve the custom and culture and nature, which gave me a lot of love 
and empathy and compassion and while I was little, it gave me the force. So I want to preserve that for the next generation. What we train, we're not to know how to cook, clean, serve and welcome only. This is just a stepping stone where they could learn about the importance of ethical way of making business, respecting culture, nature and people, and um, creating more opportunities uh, for the local community, but also to inspire other people, to encourage them to do the same. To me, success is not only about numbers at the end of the year on your balance sheet. Are the employees' family growing? Are their life is going to the next steps? Are we having impact in our waste, more waste management? Are we having, um, having an impact in carbon reducing, reduction of carbon footprint? I think these are also the numbers that any business should be considered to put into their profit and loss. Challenges are the must in one's life to see a bigger picture of all things that we as a human being face. When challenges come, it is difficult, it's heavy, it's sweaty, it's too tiring. But I cannot go up unless I overcome the challenges. Challenges are letters to push us up. So one should be always welcoming challenges as great letter to push us up. <laughs>